Let's do it. Greetings. Welcome to Golden Sessions with Doc Peace on KNSJ 89.1 FM. I'm Doc Peace, doctor of pharmacy by trade, spoken word artist at heart, and empowerment guru. Golden Sessions is a time for us to connect, to reset with doses of inspiration to empower confidence and foster global unity. Featuring golden starlings from all over the world who are shining their light so bright to ignite our light and to remind us that together we thrive. Today we have Miss Kaylee Humphreys. Mrs. Kaylee Humphreys is a Canadian-born bobsledder who currently represents the U.S. She's a two-time Olympic gold medalist, the only female bobsledder to defend a gold medal. She's a one-time Olympic bronze medalist, a four-time world champion in two women disciplines, the most in women's history. She's a monobob a new monobob world champion, the first ever championship of this year. And she's also the first female to drive a four-man bobsled with a four, full man's crew, as well as the first female to drive a four-man's bobsled with a full woman's crew. This woman is incredible. So thank you so much, Kaylee, for joining us today and for blessing us with your time and energy. Of course. Thank you for having me. I appreciate <laughs> it a lot. You are so very welcome. Please share with us, how did you become so gold? Not just on the outside, but within. How are you such an incredible, genuine, original, loving dreamer? Um, I don't really know. I just, I think a big part of it, sports has always been for me a huge part of how I express myself, what I love, what I'm good at, what I'm passionate about. And since I was a little kid, I had always wanted to go to the Olympics. And I grew up in Canada, ski racing was my first passion and love. And I realized at about 16, 17 years old, it was never going to take me to the Olympics. And I had to pick something different. And growing up in Calgary, it was where the 1988 Olympics were, where the Cool Runnings bobsled track is from. And um, I knew of the sport. I've always been really strong, very powerful for a female athletically. And um, I think the traits that I have, the focus, my intensity, my fierceness, all of that matches with the sport of bobsled. And so I reached out, looked it up online and thought, I'll give it a try and see if I even like the sport. And from there, three years later, got to go to my first Olympics. And it's just kind of been a process ever since then. I absolutely love the sport. It has taken me around the world. I've learned so many skills and traits at the high performance level, at the Olympic level, world championships, world cups from other athletes, other powerful females as well. And so I like to pride myself on learning lessons, continuing to grow and develop my skills, my traits, um, get more tools in my little invisible tool belt to try <laughs> and be, uh, you know, the best person and athlete that I can be and, you know, take a lot of the positives that are in this world and be able to maximize those. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. I mean, I should probably start off with saying congratulations because <laughs> you just came back with another medal, this bobsled world championship, which yeah. is absolutely incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a fun time. We you're never sure how it's going to go. We have a world championship every single year except for in the Olympic year, which is every 4 years for us. So, every 4th year we replace the Olympics with or we replaced the world championships with the Olympics. Um, but this year was an extra challenge. We weren't sure because of COVID if we were going to be able to compete, were we going to be able to even head over to Europe to be able to race at all. Uh, Team USA chose to miss the first half of competition this year just to be safe, stay at home, make sure competition around the world was going to be safe for us to be able to travel to. Um, and so it was a lot of hurry up and wait, a lot of, stress and anxiety and, and worry on whether we could make this happen. You're having to leave your families at this time as well. And we weren't sure what that was going to be like. So to end the season as world champion in two separate disciplines, the very first for women's mono Bob, which is something I personally fought for, for the last, oh, since like 2015. Um, so to see that come into fruition and be able to actually race in that event is huge. And so Overall, I'm really, you know, proud of myself and my team and my teammates 
for the performance this year because it definitely, you know, took took a village to make that yeah. happen. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. I'm what compelled you from the very beginning to say, hey, I want to go and become an Olympic gold medalist. What was that I'm, drive? I think I've always been born with that drive. I think it's something that matched within the sport world. Um, there was always a passion, the intensity that I saw in a lot of high performance athletes, male or female. Um, I think for me, the ability to go into a gym or to train and just completely demolish myself physically, as well as mentally to try and challenge my skills to be bigger, better, faster, stronger. These are things that um, are comfortable for me to be able to do to push my boundaries and, and my limits. And sport offers me that escape. It's my, you know, the place where I get to feel the most confident, where I get to feel, you know, the most welcomed and I get to use my personal traits and skills that I have as a female. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. Was that me? Okay. Okay. Perfect. I apologize for that. Oh, no worries, Kaylee. I don't know why. <laughs> it happens. It just randomly like cut out, which we went off Wi Fi. So now we're just on self-service so hopefully it doesn't do that again it's so good i'm glad we have this tech guy on <laughs> no, <laughs> <me too. laughs> I, yeah. it. athletics i'm all for it <laughs> in, in a gym in front of anything athletic i can do it but this technology is not my forte Agreed. i admire people that can figure it out and understand how it all works but it is yeah. Right. I it goes so, right over my head. It was such a good conversation you we were having. So I'm just like, ah, oh, where were we? Um, we can go back. Yeah, let's go back. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. So Kaylee, so you have incredible. You have developed these incredible golden skill sets of yours. So you, I know that you've done a lot of work in, um, in mindset. You had to have done so much work in mindset to get to where you are now. What are some mindset tools and strategies that you've used to empower yourself, to empower your confidence? Visualization is the first one that comes to mind for sure. Um, I think that's a very powerful tool. We have to use it a lot in regards to bobsled because I can't do the sport year round. I can't be in the summer live in California, but you can't do it in the summer anywhere in the world. So I have to be able to physically close my eyes, put myself in a bobsled, visualize the track and the corners. I have to be able to understand what it feels like, what it's supposed to look like without actually being there in that moment. And so um, I visualize quite a bit, pretty much every couple of days, I'll pick a different bobsled track or, you know, even in the winter when I'm trying to repetition after repetition it's hard to get those 10,000 hours that they say you need to perfect a craft and in order to maximize that I have to be able to close my eyes and put myself in that scenario and so visualization for me has been huge um, overall I think 
being able to understand how to be a good teammate, how to communicate with other people. Um, that's something that I've had to learn and develop. Uh, being a team player, um, looking at my goals and goal setting in general is another huge skill set that I really had to learn how to be good at. Um, I think anybody can set a goal, but how to actually make the steps in the process. Everything in my world is four years apart. We look at the Olympics and where do I want to be on that Olympic day? And then I have to work backwards from there. Where do I want to be a month before, three months before the Olympics? Where do I want to be a year before the Olympics? And I can work backwards all the way to, you know, I look at days, weeks, months, years, right up until, okay, we're in this spot today. Here's what I have to accomplish today to still reach my goal, you know, two, three, four years from now. We have the Winter Olympics coming up in one year from now. Roughly, it'll be Beijing in 2022. So um, it helps give me a timeline. Uh, it helps me focus on accomplishing my daily goals, my weekly goals, my monthly to eventually get to my yearly goals. Um, but it's definitely something sport has taught me how to do that is transferable, I think, in any aspect. If I want to learn how to play the piano or, you know, anything, speak another language, anything that I want to learn, you need to be able to set goals in order to achieve and accomplish those things. And so um, I think that is another, you know, very important tool that sport has taught me, along with patience um, and being able to, to understand not everything is in my control and how to control the things that I have power and influence over, which is my attitude, um, my positivity, how I mentally approach situations, you know, and being able to control the things I can. Some things, as we all know, even in regular life are out of our control. We can't control mm -hmm. how other people react. We can't control what other people do. Um, you know, what gets thrown at us the pandemic being one, but we can control how we adapt to those things. And so being able to focus my energy on maintaining my steps towards achieving what I want to achieve and my goals, being able to stay positive, yeah. um, being able to put energy and love towards the relationships that I want to foster. These are things that are important to me, but help me get towards my goal. And um, I can control those things. And so being very mindful of those things also helps a lot. Oh, beautiful. That's so powerful. So visualization is key, but then also knowing and owning what it is that you can control and having that mindfulness to be aware of that. That's so powerful. How did you develop these skill sets and how would you, what would you recommend for those who are struggling with uh, with overcoming a certain situation? Was there any certain situation in your life that you were able to use these skill sets to overcome? For sure. There's been tons. Um, in sport in general, whether it was an injury that I sustained, um, in 2006 was my first Olympics and I didn't actually get to compete in those Olympics. I was classified as the alternate. So I got to watch my teammates compete I was so close to achieving my dream and that nearly broke me as an athlete, you know, being an Olympian, going to the Olympics, that was always my goal and my dream. And I was so close to achieving it, but it wasn't my time. It wasn't my turn. And I left the sport so bitter and resentful for a period of time. Um, I didn't get to choose whether I race. That was a coach's decision. Um, you know, that was the team's decision and I was the odd man out and I had to really take all that negativity that I felt for months, um, all that hardship and channel it into something I could control. And so I changed positions on the bobsled. I went from being the person at the back, the brakeman to being the person at the front. And I thought, you know, I'll continue to work as hard as I can and put my best ever forward, not knowing what the future would hold, but understanding that. Um, by learning a new skill set, by slightly changing the path or direction, I, you know, I had a different option. And so um, I focused really hard on just trying to learn how to drive a bobsled, what to, you know, what new skills and traits I needed to, to do to overcome that. I've had to deal with teammates in my past that I'm not friends with, that I wouldn't get to choose 
on my own. I think a lot of people find that in, in their work life too, where, yeah. you know, you don't always get to pick who you work with. You don't get to pick your boss or <laughs> the person in the cubicle next to you, but you have to learn how to make it work with these people and, and how they are in their life and the energy that they put out affects you. And really having to, for me, I compartmentalize a lot of stuff. So I have to visually think, you know, if somebody's affecting me, their energy is negative or something's come up, you know, how does that affect me? I need to give myself a lot of like checks and balances. Um, and if I notice I start to get affected by it, then I need to be able to to cut it off. And again, bring that that positivity, that light back into to my world and focus it back to where it needs to be um, for me to achieve my goals. And my teammates, like I said, I don't always get to pick them. Um, but in sport, if you're the best at what it is that you do, then I want to be partnered with you, whether I like you personally or not, whether we're going to be best friends or not. The point is, this is my job. This is I respect this sport too much. And my goals and dreams supersede my emotions. I need to take emotion out of it. And this is what's best in order for the team, in order for myself to still achieve success. And so um, we do our job, we come in, we make it professional, we give the utmost respect to each other as teammates, to the coaching staff, to the sport itself. Um, and then we have our personal time. And with teammates I love, we get to hang out and go for coffee and it's not about sport at all. And with teammates that I don't like, we don't have that side and that's okay. You don't have to learn to love and like everybody, but I think having that respect is a, a huge part. Um, being able to communicate even with people that you wouldn't necessarily choose to associate with is important. And I think as long as we can respect that people are human, everyone is trying their best, everyone is doing yeah. what it is that they can in their world for the skill sets that they have. Right. Um, it's not a comparison. It's not about, you know, competition is who's best, but it's who's best based on the skill set. And so I'm not going to hate somebody because they have a different skill set or, you know, they're, they're not me. And I don't want to be hated for that same stuff. I want to be respected and be able to be in a safe place to do my job. And they, you know, have earned that same right. And so um, I think being able to work with a multitude of different types of people, whether I like them, don't like them. Um, I think that's also something that I've really had to learn and develop, but sport yeah. has taught me and put me in many uncomfortable situations to, wow, uh, wow, wow. force me to really? learn. This is incredible. You're absolutely amazing. I love what you're sharing with us on how we have the power to create our own perspective. We can change our perspective. We can create our own reality. And then you've, sure. al you've also touched on the fact that it's not a competition. It's the world we all live in. So even though you are a gold medalist com competitor, you don't view everything as a competition because we all have our unique skill sets that we're working with and we're all doing our best. So we're going to take a quick break and you are listening to Golden Sessions here with Doc Peace featuring Kaylee Humphreys. And we're going to we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will dive into more on how we can make our success inevitable. So stay tuned. Let's do it. Are you my friend? I'll admit, I'm confused. I used to friend request and now I follow. Am I in this alone? I once thought that birds flew solo, each bird on its own, just feathers and bone relying alone on their wings to soar. Now I see that even though they move independently, they are part of something much greater than what they could be individually. And like a bird, I may sing to my own music and dance to my own drum, but connections drown me reminding me that I am not alone. My purpose is greater than me, myself, or I. 
I once believed that whether or not I chose to use my gifts was my prerogative. But does burying my talents do you or I any good? Part in my mind delay. Sometimes I may need to remind my mind what it's capable of. Jog myself from doubt to a confident state. See, I am not alone, my friend. And neither are you. I see you. We are in this flock together for the better. And together we thrive. Together we thrive. And we are back. You are listening to Golden Sessions with Doc Peace on KNSJ 89.1 FM. I'm Doc Peace, and we're here with Mrs. Kaylee Humphreys, world champion, two-time gold medal, Olympic gold medalist. And let's get back into it. Kaylee, you've shared with us many of your golden attributes, and we already know that you are gold. How has sharing your gold helped you thrive? Um, I think a lot of the skill sets that I've developed in sport, um, I used to think everybody possessed those same skills and I've had to learn that that is not true. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think being able to help others, being able to transition more into a leadership role within the sporting community, I'm not you know, the young up and comer anymore. I've been around a minute. Um, I've learned a lot and it allows me to be successful and confident and powerful in who I am. Um, but I want other females to also have that. I want the sport to allow greater opportunities for other females. So the skills that I've used and, and the power that I've uh, the power within myself that I feel mm. I really want to um empower other athletes to also develop those same skills but realistically have greater opportunities within the sport so I really focus on trying to give back on trying to help others the up and coming the next generation um, answering questions being able to impart the wisdom that I do have on anybody that will ask um, I'm not just going to give it away freely but if people want to know competitors are so competitors but if they <laughs> want to know if it comes down to you know how do you drive this specific corner what do you do in this situation or scenario um i've had a lot of people in my life answer those questions for me when i was learning and growing and i want to be able to to do that and, and give back to those people as well and help build that next generation of olympic champions and and bob Sutters for team usa Wow, that's incredible. So yeah, I know that you are like the break man. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I know that you're the break man. And there's, then there's I'm the pilot break. now. And there, you're the so pilot. I started now. out. Yep. Okay. I started out as a break man, which is the person at the back of the two man sled. And then I transitioned to be the pilot. So the person at the front that drives the sled. And then I also do the monobob event. So women now have two events in bobsled. And the monobob event requires me to push and drive. And it's just me in the sled by myself. So we do, wow. I do both events. Wow. That's incredible. So I know that when you're in the bobsled, this is the limitation of what I know. When you're in the bobsled, right, your head's down yeah. to, to create more aerodynamic speed, right? Yeah. How do you know where to go? How do you know when to turn, when to break, when you can't visually see it? Is it a trust thing? Or is it, is it a skill set or is it both? You can see a little bit. Um, you don't ever pull the brakes going down the track. Um, I think that's a common question that we get all the time is, you know, do the brakes get pulled? They don't get touched at all. Once you're going, you're going. It's just up to the pilot to drive and to navigate that sled down the track. You can see. Um, but a lot of it is done by feel because things come at you so fast. You're traveling at 80, 90 miles an hour. You, it's hard to react in the small windows that you had using G force and, and pressure. And you can't solely rely on visualization. Your brain can't process that fast. So a lot of it again is done 
yes, visually a little bit, but also by feel and then also by repetition and just understanding the sport itself as a whole. So I've had to really focus on trying to become a master of my craft and mm. being able to to drive and understand angles and speed and velocity and g-force and all those the words that get thrown around in bobsled that um i really had to to understand a lot about which has brought a lot more science <laughs> than i ever deemed possible in school into sport but um it's been yeah it's been a good journey and i really have to visualize and put myself in those scenarios all the tracks around the world are all drastically different. So the length of them, the amount of corners, the actual like shape, size, structure, all of it is different on every single track. So I have to repetition after repetition, go over each track, summer, winter, fall, be able to do it physically, but be able to mentally also see myself doing it in the times I can't do it physically to keep up to date. It's not something that you just do once and you have it and you understand and you're good. Um, wow. Wow. It's a, wow. a constant thing that we do. And it all goes back. It seems like it all goes back to this visualization, seeing yourself do it, seeing yourself doing the moves and making it happen, creating your own reality and creating that. Yep. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. And I, and I, I know this is, this is something that you cannot just be born with, right? Like you have, like you've developed these skill sets along, along your life road. And I know that you had a time in your life where you had to make this decision. You had to pivot and you pivoted from becoming, being a skier to now being a bobsledder. What was that, that made, that made you pivot? What was that I, moment? Can you yeah. take us back to that? Um, a lot of it was just goal orientated and driven. Uh, it was based around opportunity, um, trying to mix what my heart and what my head said, uh, and appease both sides of, you know, what it is I felt. Um, I've had multiple points in my life when I've really had to pivot transitioning from team Canada to now representing team USA. That was something that happened two years ago. That was a major shift in pivot and in real life too. I got married to an American, um, but then having to give up an entire career and history in Canada and being accepted in something brand new and unsure with Team USA. Um, but there's been quite a few moments in pivots. I think following and understanding every possible scenario, everything that could go right, but could go wrong while looking at what feels the most important to me um, whenever I reach a pivotal point in my life or a point when, you know, that it will affect real life scenarios, mm -hmm. um, transitioning in sport from one sport to another, from one country to another. Um, I really had to learn how to listen to my head and my heart, both mm. simultaneously, what makes me happy. Um, and then what are the realities in real life that come into play when you make these decisions. And as long as I can plan and prepare for every reality, good or bad, and as long as it makes me happy, and as long as I feel like it's me being able to work towards something greater, bigger, better, more successful, as long as it appeases, you know, what it is I'm trying to achieve, then I think it's always a good decision. Um, and once I make my decision, I, I think about it every decision I do is usually a thought out process. And the bigger the life change, the longer it takes uh, yeah. to go through every scenario. I have lots of conversations with my close friends and family and coaching staff and my sports psychologist. And, um, you know, I really dive into every plan and every scenario to make sure it's the right choice. But when I do make it, I usually go full in to the decision as well. No looking back and do everything I can to make that scenario happen and just continue to move forward. I think dwelling on the past um, has never served me well. It doesn't, when I'm directly in the sport, if I make a mistake in bobsled, I can't think about the mistake. I need to always constantly be moving ahead. Mm -hmm. And I think in real life, it's similar where mistakes happen and that's okay. We're human and life is hard. And sometimes it's literally just 
surviving the moment, but there's other times when, you know, you have to be able to think and plan ahead and where do you want to go? What do you want to do? How do you make yourself happy long-term? Um, and what are those things that make you happy? And the more you know about yourself and about, you know, what you want to get out of life and your goals and dreams, then the easier it is to just try and move it constantly be moving ahead it doesn't mean you need to be perfect it doesn't mean you need to try and be better every second of every day but as long as you're taking steps no matter how small a step forward some days it's one step some days it's you know a mile long but as long as you're taking those steps forward to yes. to achieving your dreams and goals then you know internally it's they're always the right decisions and it makes those pivot points a little easier to handle uh, and a little easier to to get through. Yes, that's so beautiful, Kaylee. So make those forward moves intentionally to become the vision that you foresee. That's what you've done in your life, and that's what you encourage others to do as well. And I love what you said about pushing onwards, making that decision, and moving forward. Because there is no path. There is no path to the past. We must keep making those forward moves intentionally onward. This has been absolutely incredible, Kaylee. You've given us so much light um, to help us ignite that. Of course. Um, <laughs> in, so how can we connect with you further and learn more about you and what you do and follow you on your journey, this incredible journey that you're on right now? Well, social media is great for that. So <laughs> Instagram, Twitter. I'm not the best with Facebook. Um, I used to be better, but definitely Instagram and Twitter are my top two. Um, so feel free, follow along. If you guys have questions, I am, you know, on it pretty regularly. So send me, feel free to send messages too and interact and, um, comments and all that kind of stuff. But if there's questions, if there's things anybody wants to know and, or just to understand more about whether it be bobsled or working out or, you know, just my life and who I am, then social media is going to be the way to do that. Wonderful. You know, I could just probably just pop on your husband's Facebook page because he, True. I noticed that he is your biggest fan. <laughs> he is. Yeah, I lucked out. You want a supportive partner. I got that in spades, which has been huge. And that's part of that is how we met. Travis and I met through social media. Um, and, you know, he, he literally sent me a message being very, very supportive, offering to slide as my teammate, which back in 2009, Travis, my husband did the sport for a year and that was it. It was good enough for him. He got his, you know, debut raced for Team USA and just realized it wasn't what he wanted to foresee, but it, that allowed us to have a lot of mutual friends in common. So when he offered to, to slide with me and partner with me, which when I was doing the four man event with the men was a big deal because a lot of guys did not want to see women, you know, doing four men. They didn't want to support. It was the whole women driver. You're not big enough, strong enough, fast enough. You mm. can't do it scenario um, to have somebody that supported me and believed in me was was big. And from there, we had more conversations and went on some dates and it just kind of took off and blossomed. But now he's he is my biggest fan and I am so grateful to have, you know, a husband that, that oh. backs me and believes in my hopes and goals and dreams just as much as, um, I do. So yes. I'm what, a, what a blessing, right? What a blessing to have that support and that love. I think that that's for something sure. that we might often take for granted to, uh, to have that. So that's incredible that you have that. Um, I want to touch on before we close today, I want to touch on this, this, um, this drive that you have, to 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 not only be a victor and a champion in these areas of that don't normally have like females or don't normally have those who look like you or don't normally have um, others in that arena that are channeling in that space. How what drives you to go into these spaces and and succeed? Like how do where does that drive come from? And how can we how can we internalize that in our own lives to go into these spaces that don't normally have people that look like us or don't normally have those um, succeeding in these arenas? How can we ourselves internal like internally champion our gold, our genuine, original, loving dreamer traits within to to 
to put ourselves in that space and not and and succeed? Um, I think for me, I oh, I've never believed in limitations. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a household, you know, with a father that if you wanted to do anything, you could be anybody, anything. You had to work hard for it. It wasn't going to come easy. I had to dedicate. I had to, you know, sacrifice for what it is I wanted. But nothing was unattainable. Um, I never fit in when I was a teenager. I got bullied quite a bit growing up. I was different. Um, and I think a lot of that comes from my intensity and my focus and my passion for what it is that I do. But at the end of the day, when you're growing up, you don't fully understand that. And still to this day, I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but I've had to learn how to be okay and find my tribe and find my group of people and understand that I don't have to be everybody's everything. I don't have to be Miss Popular. I don't have to be loved. I need to be me. I need to be happy for myself and I need to do what's best for me and my scenario and, and my life. And you will find those people. You will find the support. And for a long time, it was my sisters. It was my parents. And that was kind of it. Um, and I've had moments in my life where I've really had to, you know, cut certain people out. And I've been fortunate that new people have come in and I've had to trust and learn to let them in. But finding my group has helped huge and just understanding what traits I want to pursue and who I am and what I want to be and what I value um, and making sure that I find like minded people in those scenarios. And then when I go into situations, understanding that just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean it can't happen. Mm. Just because no one's defended an Olympic gold, someone's going to do it at some point. I have no doubt. Why can't it be me? Wow. And I got told once um, by another female rower, Marnie McBean. And, you know, that really resonated with me is she said, well, someone's going to stand on the top of the podium. Why can't it be you? And I, True. There's nothing that says it can't. History has yet to be written. And if I work hard, if I sacrifice and dedicate, there's nothing that says it can't be me. There's nothing that says, you know, somebody that looks like me or acts like me or, you know, is me can't achieve those goals and dreams. Just because people say it hasn't been done doesn't mean I can't be the one to achieve it. You know, girls don't drive sleds. Okay. But I really want to drive one and I think I could do really good at it. I want the opportunity. You know, girls can't have two events okay well why not and understanding i i haven't i haven't always been you know everybody's cup of tea but i when things don't make sense to me i seek to understand why and how and or challenge status quo because i don't believe in you know just putting limitations on anybody anybody can do anything and achieve whatever it is they want if they set their mind to it if they're willing to sacrifice and dedicate and work hard and there's nothing that stops anybody from, you know, achieving those goals and dreams. And so whenever you find yourself in a scenario that you're unsure of, or you're not confident of, just remember you are new, uniquely you. I am me. I'm not trying to be anybody else. Have confidence in who you are. Find your tribe and your people that help give you that support. Build up your confidence and knowing that, you know, you can be anything at any time. And just because it hasn't been done, just because you haven't seen somebody like you do it doesn't mean you can't be the first and definitely go out, put yourself out there. Failing isn't failing if you learn a lesson from it. And there's tons of lessons that I have learned. Um, and it's very easy to think, oh, I failed at those, but I didn't. I just learned a lesson and I always pride myself on, you know, even if it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, if I've learned something, even anything throughout the process, even if it's just, well, don't do that again, you know, <laughs> I've learned something and I can go forward knowing that I won't make that mistake again. I won't do that same scenario again. And so it's a different path automatically and it's a new opportunity every time. And I might strike out a whole bunch, but eventually something will stick. And when it does, then I will move forward from there and be stronger and wiser and, and more confident because of it. So I just wish everybody, you know, can see themselves the way that other people see them. And it's 
you know, we shouldn't be comparing to anybody else. We should just take the motivation that comes and the positivity that comes in day to day lives and be able to channel that into what it is we want and move forward and our goals and hopes and dreams and our process to be the best versions of ourselves and try not to limit others in the process yes. to let them do their thing. You do yours. We can coexist and live in this world simultaneously. Um, and I don't need to stop anybody and I hope anybody doesn't stop me in, in my process, but go forward with, with confidence and strength and knowing that you are unique. And so wow. am I, that's how, we can be awesome together. Yes, we can be awesome together because we yes. are each gold, right? We are each we a sure genuine, are. original, loving dreamer. And when we allow ourselves to express our golden light, we not only ignite the light in others, it's a ripple effect, right? Correct. Um, and so I love what you said about just not limiting ourselves, not limiting others, um, because when we do so, we, we limit our potential. 100%. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know you've overcome so much in your life. You share with us a bit on that. And I appreciate you. You've overcome having, I know, two broken legs. You've overcome having a transition. You've overcome so many different pivots in your life. And you've been able to do that all within just controlling your mind, having this mind mindset focused um, and not not letting those bullies shut you down. And I think yep. that's a lesson that all of us can learn today. Yes. stay focused so thank you so much kaylee for joining us today for blessing us with your gifts your talents your positivity light and your love well thank you for having me and i appreciate the platform to be able to do it and i look forward to having future conversations with you yes you're so welcome you're listening to golden sessions with doc peace on knsj 89.1 fm that concludes today's session with mrs kaylee humphreys two-time gold medal champion, world champion of, of mono bobsledding. Thank you for joining us today. Remember that you are gold. We all are, and together we thrive. Keep shining. Let's do it. Are you my friend? I'll admit, I'm confused. I used to friend request and now I follow. Am I in this alone? I once thought that birds flew solo, each bird on its own, just feathers and bone relying alone on their wings to soar. Now I see that even though they move independently, they are part of something much greater than what they could be individually. And like a bird, I may sing to my own music and dance to my own drum, but connections ground me, reminding me that I am not alone. My purpose is greater than me, myself, or I. I once believed that whether or not I chose to use my gifts was my prerogative. But does bearing my talents to you or I any good? Part in my mind delay, sometimes I may need to remind my mind what it's capable of, jog myself from doubt to a confident state. See, I am not alone, my friend, and neither are you. I see you. We are in this flock together for the better and together we thrive. Together we thrive.